All right, yo, how's it going? So you're playing Lucian vs. Talon, from what I can tell. Now, you probably watched my other ones, but if you haven't, basically what I do, I'm just going to write up a notepad of notes at the end, and I'll explain them to you. And of course, if you have any questions about them, you can just ask me. So Lucian uh, vs. Talon coaching. Now you say in your uh, fiver thing, you say currently sitting in platinum, but I haven't really tried the season. You hit low diamond every season you take seriously, and you hit a wall. If you want to try climb to masters, if the current attach file works, okay, yeah, it works. Um, as a game, oh wait, okay, so this was a different game I believe that you're talking about. Yeah, okay, so that was a different game you're talking about in the thing, because then you changed the game. Okay, so we'll just see how this game goes, and we'll see what you could have done. Uh, we'll see what you could have done better. So, Lucian vs. Talon, uh, you got Lucian Lily, Chaos, it's definitely a good game to be a Lucian. Now, I think you already should be kind of playing aggressively here, like, I'm not sure really why you're waiting at your tower, I guess you're just AFK, but... The game does start at level 1, and I think you should be looking to bully this guy off this wave pretty early. Okay, yeah. It's good to put an auto, and then just kind of let it slow push. So far, all good. We get all these. Your positions should be a lot more aggressive here, so... Like, the only way that he can get a CS right is by using W. So, oh, let me just check if you can see my mouse. Pretty sure you can. Yeah, so... Uh, in this situation, oh, also, let me move my cam so it doesn't cover the map. I should just move it over here for now. Okay, well, anyway, so, the thing is, at level 1, like, the only way he should be able to get the CS is, like, either he walks up to it, takes a shit ton of damage, or he uses W. So, either way, you want to be in a position where he has to make that choice. If you stand somewhere like here, or you stand somewhere like here, he either Ws you, in which case he misses all three of the creeps, and you can just walk away from the second half of W. Or, if he Ws the creeps, then you can look to auto-attack him. But what happens, because you're positioning way too passively, he's allowed to use W, um, and you don't punish him at all. So that's, like, super weird. You should definitely be looking to really hard punish him. So good. That was good positioning there. But yeah, basically, like, I don't think the way you're positioning here is very good at all. It's like, you're positioning in a way where he actually can CS the creeps and hit you, uh, which is really bad. But, so, like, that's, that's a start, right? It's like, you're making it really easy for him to hit W on you and the creeps. Uh, but also, it's just like, you're not even far enough up to where you can punish him. So, yeah, the positioning is pretty poor, I would say. The wave control is good, though. I'd probably also just, like, be looking at, for, like, a Q. Maybe, yeah, like, you should try, like, at least put a little bit of your mana down so that you start getting value out of the regen. I think you could have queued him through these creeps. Like... You don't want to really spam... Well, you, I mean, you can spam your Q, but with Doran's Blade, it's not as easy to spam as if you have Corrupting Pot. I do like the Doran's Blade, though, but I think that you should probably just use at least one so that, like, you start getting some mana regen, because right now it's, like, you're full mana, um, and you're not really getting anything out of it. So I'd like to see you just, like, use one Q. So once again, he's allowed to see us for free. Not really sure why. You should realize that, again, it's like the only CS he can get here uh, are these two creeps. So either you position here to where, like, you can Q or auto him uh, if he goes for these creeps with a W. Or you even position down here, although I think, I didn't check where the jungler started, but you might have to be a bit careful standing here. Um, but yeah, it's like the same thing. He uses W, gets two CS for free, doesn't get punished at all. Super, super weird. So it's like, yeah, it's like already level two and you haven't actually touched this guy or pressured him in any way. Uh, Q here was, like, pretty bad, I would say. It was, like, sort of a random timing. Like, you, you've you been, like, holding on your Q for, like, a long time, right? So, if you if you are just, like, looking to get super high-value, like, guaranteed Qs, then you should be looking for when he actually goes for CS. But this CS isn't even low. It's just, like, completely random time. Once again, he's allowed to auto a creep for free. There's not much you can do about this one, because if you do waste your Q like this, so let's just play this out again. Like, right here, you can make it so that, like, he has to take a Q for getting this creep. Um, you know, but, like, after you use the Q, it's like, yeah, you kind of don't have the cooldowns really to punish him. It's like, if you auto and he Ws, like, he can probably punish you, so. Um, yeah, so far, though, it's it's really bad, I, I think. Like, you have this mega strong winning lane in Lucian versus Talon, and it hasn't converted to anything. Like, he's still full HP. He hasn't really lost any CS. Again, another really weird Q, like super weird timing. Okay. 
Now, so it looks like Rek'Sai did three camps mid, I'm guessing? Pretty... hold on. So, I'm just gonna go way back and just actually check if the enemy jungle started. So he did... Okay, so bot lane leash, gangplank started in lane. So Rek'Sai did just do three camps mid. So I think ideally, like right here at 2.30, you would want to ward top side. So the reason is that like either Rek'Sai does three camps mid and comes from bot side, or he just does like three camps and goes into his top side. Either way, if you ward this like top top bush, uh, you should be really safe playing in this area. Um, but it looks like what happens here is that you're not really hugging... I mean, I don't know. No, I guess it's actually fine. I was going to say like you're kind of more towards the middle, but I think you're actually fine. Yeah, I think you're actually fine. You punish level 3 to level 2. This is good. Yeah, I mean, this all goes pretty well. I think he played it pretty good mechanically. You probably kill this guy as well. Okay, so that should be game over, I would say. So you push this in, phase. Okay, everything's going all good. You're Dirk, I like that. Uh, now here, definitely freeze this wave. Do not push this wave. Okay, good. You kind of thin it out. You should hold it. Yep, okay, perfect, perfect. Now the game should be like completely fucked for Talon. You shouldn't really be able to do anything. Um, I think you actually probably thin this wave a bit too much. And I think it might start pushing back. I think you should actually probably take tank these range creeps for a bit. Um, I mean, sorry, the melee creeps. I think killing both the melees, it's like... The thing is, because it's so close to your tower and because this wave's going to stack up, it might be that this wave actually pushes back out. And if it does, that would be a really big problem. So let's just actually see if it does or not. Maybe it'll be kind of close. Good punish. It actually looks like the wave's going to be pretty much fine. Really hard to come by. I'd actually just kind of starting to push back out. I think, yeah, if you tank those two extra rank uh, melee creeps, you probably could have kept the wave frozen here for a lot, a lot longer. Because now it is pushing back out to him, which is like... Yeah, it's just sort of going to happen if you... If you're last hitting creeps, like, that's natural, but also it's because, like, the creeps stacked up on him, and because you didn't leave enough creeps alive, so... I think, yeah, if you tank a few more, you probably keep this freeze for a bit longer. Makes it a bit harder for Talon to play the game. That would have been nice. Now, Talon uses W. He looks to punish pretty hard here. I think he's... Yeah, yeah. You definitely need to be looking for a few more Qs. Probably at better times. I'm actually not even sure if you've hit him with a Q this game. You need to think a lot more about, like, the timing. Yeah, I, I don't know why you... You like... Okay, let's go back a bit. I think you pretty consistently kind of queue at bad times. And that that's, like, all of Lucian's poke, pretty much, unless you're getting orders. So, especially if you're on the Dirk build, is really, really important. So you should be trying to, like, either queue through a creep when he goes for it, or just stand, like, literally on top of a creep, so that if he dashes to it, like, you can just queue him, right? So I think here, it's like, he's not going for any creeps. You could probably just queue him here, but you go for the auto, which I think is fine. Um, but then you should be looking for the queue, like, maybe on this creep when he goes for it. I think, yeah, you just don't really, like, position and, and use it that well. I think that could have been a free queue, because, like, he was going for the creep, you just kind of walked the other way. And then here, I don't really understand why you're using this creep. I don't think, queuing this creep, sorry, I don't think you should be scared of Rek'Sai at the moment. Um, like, you had the vision, you had Lilia just there. Okay, I guess you were scared of Rek'Sai, but I don't think he needed to be. You should try to get a deeper ward if you want to keep playing like this, though. So, like, right now, like, right now could be a really good time to get a deep ward. So, like, if you are scared here, you need to instantly push this wave and then look to get a deeper ward. Because it's, like, right now, now that Lilia base, like, now I think it's right to be kind of scared. Uh, Kale called Rex topside in chat, so I think right now you could go and ward the raptors or just, like, ward this ramp here, and that would make you a lot safer. Okay, not the best ward, I think, if you place this a little bit better, like, if you place it a bit more down, it could make you a bit safer, there's still a little kind of, like, area where you could probably die here, where, like, if you didn't have this, you know, like, he could tunnel, yeah, he could tunnel over here, it's a pretty low chance, though, so I think it's mostly a good ward, it could be a little bit better, okay, Rek'Sai shows top, so it's something you have to worry about anymore, um, now, I think here, you have a couple choices, I would say you either keep the wave in the middle, and you wait for Talon to walk up to it, because you're about to hit level 6. So if, like, Talon walks up to this wave, when you're about to hit level 6 and ignite, you probably kill him. 
The only reason you would push this under tower would be if you can like roam somewhere or if you can like take a camp or something or if you think you can kill Talon under his tower. But I don't think any of these are really the case. Like, okay, top's dead. I don't think you can roam bot, although we can't see their HP. So it's possible they're low. But I think that most likely pushing this wave just uses your cooldowns and then probably... Okay, I mean, this guy is just trolling, I guess. So I think what should happen here is that like... I think Talon should see that you're pushing the wave. He should just like stay under his tower, like wait for it to come. And then if, if you ult him, he can just E over the wall. But instead, Talon just does something super... I mean, like I actually have no idea, but, but good punish. So yeah, you get Talon's flash. Could you have killed him? Let's just check. E or auto W. I mean, you didn't realize he was going to stand still. I think that's pretty hard to predict. So, okay, either way. It's a good chunk. You crash this. He's going to have to base, so you should probably push one more wave and then recall. Wait for this to stack up. You really want to push this wave kind of faster. I probably would have queued it when it was in the line, like right here. I think you really want to like get rid of this wave and then kind of get back on the map. Okay, so you take a really, really long time to push this wave. Uh... Yeah, it takes you actually ages because you kind of just, like, didn't really commit resources to to the wave. Like, you're using Q on, like, one creep. You didn't use a W at all. So, your base is quite late, and that is quite punishing. You can see that the later you get to lane here, the more time Talon gets to use this room for. Like, this this uh, lane of prior. So, you should be very, very aware of, like, your tempo versus roaming champs in particular because they will punish lack of tempo really hard. So, like... Yep, Talon used it, but he's going to die. I mean, he's just trolling, right? So. Okay, well, either way, that guy's 1 HP. You should just go back to mid. It's a cannon wave, so you can get a lot of... You can get a lot here. Sort of rough. Okay, you don't have any vision, but, like, you know Talon's low, so you should be able to get this. Now, did you have the gold to buy a pink on this base? No, not really. Okay. You just got to be a bit careful. I think you really want to, like, shove this... Yeah, I think you need to shove this wave as quick as possible and then, like, try and find a ward in, in 13 seconds. Well, now you see Rek'Sai, so not as bad. You back off. Pretty um. I feel like, how did you lose so much mana? Because I feel like the problem is that like you come back on the map here without being able to pressure because you don't have much mana okay so first off you leave base at like basically half mana i think it's worth waiting an extra like two seconds to make sure you have a full mana bar because what ends up happening is like you come here like okay q for cs i think that's fine then you just w i mean that's all good should be one more q for cs I mean, that really sucks if you have to use that Q there. That's like 70 mana for one creep, which like would be, I guess, kind of good if it's a cannon, right? But the thing is, if you realize what's happened here, you're you're like fresh out of base um, and you're almost out of mana again. Like you pretty much can't punish or like you can pressure town a little bit, but it's like if you have mana for like W alt, um, W alt and E while this guy has no flash, which I'm pretty sure he doesn't, and you have ignite, like potentially you can just kill him. Um, but now you're like super low mana. You got a biscuit, which is nice. Guess you're coming to get honey fruit or something. But yeah, your pressure is like actually a lot lower than it should be here. Yeah, Rex like ganks you. Okay, I, I think you did play this really weirdly mechanically. You did live, but I think like and okay, so like right here, Rex like goes on you. As soon as as soon as he uses his knockup, you want to E like straight away, but you're like trading orders with him in melee range. So when Rek'Sai like burrows onto you, you don't want to E instantly because he's going to cancel your dash anyway, right? So you wouldn't want to E like right now or well, if you can E and not get knocked up, it's good, right? Like he's not quite in range. So actually, you probably could have E'd. But anyway, I understand like holding it. But then right now, you should just E and then, you know, probably like play towards your team. Instead, you're just like trading orders with him. You lose like your entire health pool. You get the kill though. Your team's like here. Um, it was good presence of mind to walk down, so that's good. You shove this wave. Uh, you base, so everything's going great. 
If you're on the Darren Rune Quiver build, we'd love to see it. Um, yeah, okay, that's all good. Come back to lane. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty risky to push at the moment. So the reason I think this is like quite scary is that at this moment, okay, like you see Rek'Sai, so if you do want to push this wave and you see Lulu, so actually you can push this wave, like this singular wave, but the reason like why pushing would be quite scary in general at the moment is you have no flash, no vision on either side of mid and your jungler's in base. So it's like, and also your bot lane's in base. So you're basically the only or the most gankable person on the map. So if you want, like... You can, like, hard shove this wave, uh, but you're going to be really... You need to be really careful shoving waves after this. It's, like, a really high chance that you die to some sort of gank until you get some vision. So you definitely have to be kind of low pressure at this kind of moment. You're going to have to play, like, quite closely with your jungler, I think. You got Karma near you. I think this is... Yeah, it's, it's a bit spooky, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, well, Karma's here. Rex is here as well. Makes sense that they're all here. Oh my god. Yeah, so that's a really punishing death. And I think, to be honest, I don't think you really should be playing aggressively here. I think this is... It's honestly kind of lucky, the way this went. Like, because your Karma was on the map later than Lulu, right? Like, okay, if we go all the way back, we see Lulu's already on the map. And Karma just base. So what should happen is it should be that their support is here first. Um, and we saw Rek'Sai top and Lily off the map as well. So their jungle should be here first as well. So you you are like making this play, this like dash in right here, knowing or like you have the tools, you have the information on the map to know that they should have jungle and support first move. You have no flash, no vision. There's like four reasons or so uh, that this is really scary. So you get kind of lucky, I think, that that no one just kills you right now. But after that, it's like, okay, you've managed to kind of chill out. You can maybe look to ult this guy. But as soon as you see Rex out here, it's like, okay, you go back to playing on your range. But again, it's like you're, you're walking... I don't know why the quality just died, by the way. Um, to be honest, if you have your W here and you W ult Lulu, she probably dies. So I think you could have played it better mechanically. Like, let's have a look. I think you... E auto auto, Q auto auto. I think if you hadn't used W there, you're in like a super good spot. You could look to WR this Lulu and she probably dies. But it's like right now... Yeah, I don't know. It's just like you're walking into fucking melee range of a Rek'Sai and you get flashed on and die. So it's, it's a really bad death. And it also is just like a really bad time to play aggressive, you know? Like, for lots of reasons. Oh my god, that was massive. Okay. But it's not the end of the world. Like, Rek'Sai did use his flash, and I think Rek'Sai getting the shutdown is better than if someone else gets the shutdown. So, that's kind of nice. Well, it's better than if Talon gets it, at least. So you push mid. Um, looking at that bot play, it looks like it's already done. Here, you just, like, go straight back to mid, or you farm something. I think you're wasting your time. I mean, you could try go for this, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of lucky that you managed to dodge that Rek'Sai. You actually walk around Talon and Rek'Sai. I mean... Is this even worth it? I actually don't think it is. Does Jinx have a shutdown? I don't think she does. So like... Okay. If you stay mid right now, you can probably take... You can either take a plate and the next wave, or you could take Raptors. Like you walk bot, you honestly get, I would say, a little lucky. Because you're walking to the weak side, that's why this is scary. Like, your bot lane's dead, your jungler's top, and all of their members are bot. So it's quite lucky that you don't die on the way down here, I, I think. I think it'd be better just to push mid, honestly. But you do get this kill. I don't think she was a shutdown. I think you probably would have got more gold from pushing mid. Although, I think there is an argument that, like, stopping Jinx from getting plates is also worth a lot of gold. So, it's definitely not... The outcome isn't bad, but I kind of question whether that works. Like, you know, if you make this play a hundred times, how many times does this work? I'm I'm not totally sure. I feel like it, it is good to kind of look for these, like, random chaotic roams in solo queue, especially when you're playing a champ that snowballs. Um, but I would just, like, be aware. I guess that that was risky. Like, you were pathing to your weak side where they had three members and your jungler was top. That's pretty scary. You keep pushing this. 
Uh, I think that's fine. I think you know that they're all topside, so you're pretty much just chilling. I think you probably push another wave as well. I don't think anyone can be here. Worst case, you could ult the wave if you felt like you really needed to shove it quickly, but yeah, I don't think you need to. I think you base now. You have a lot of gold. If you WR this guy, I'm pretty sure he's dead, by the way. Like, so... He dashes on you. So you should WR him. Yeah, I mean, it's just really poorly played mechanically again. Like, you should think about what you want here. I think you, like, WR, just play on your range. Um, and, like, he should never be able to catch up to you. But, it's, again, like, you're trying to auto-attack a Rek'Sai. And that just, like... It's either he has Prowler's Glory, or he has Flash, and then, like, that's the only reason you die here, pretty much. Like, you, you can just get out here. Again, it's like, well, yeah, I don't know. There's nothing really more to it other than just, like, you're not really assessing what the threats to you are here. Because the only way that this guy can kill you is if he manages to close the gap. And before, it was, like, it was with Flash. Here, it's with Prowler's Claw. You can just walk out here, and they can't do anything to you. Um, and then you're just completely fine. So you go in, die... Honestly, not too bad a death. It's definitely not as bad as the last one because um, you did push in the wave and I don't think you really lose anything for it. So other than the gold given over, it's honestly not too bad a death. Obviously, it's preferable if you don't die, but um, as far as deaths go, you, you don't lose a whole lot for it. I guess you lose, you actually do lose some play spots, so it's a bit more punishing. I didn't realize place was still up. It's kind of a fast game. So actually, yeah, Talon caught it. Actually, yeah. Uh, Talon got a lot of gold off this. He got 300 gold on you. He pushes an extra wave and then takes two plate spot. So it was a pretty good gold, big gold swing. But I think this one was purely... I don't know. It depends how you want to describe it. Like, is it mechanical or is it more like skirmishing knowledge? Mm, up to you, honestly. I think it's more... Some people would say this is mechanics, I guess. And even I was saying it's mechanics. But I, I actually think it's more just like skirmishing knowledge. Like knowing what kind of threats there are to you and like playing around them and stuff like that. So you walk me out of base, I think that was fine. Uh, now they should be off the map, so you should be able to hit this tower, I think. As long as you save your E for Rek'Sai, I think you should have no problems. Okay, so you knock that tower down. Um, and then start to play the side lane. Drop a ward, very nice. Helen starts pushing out this way. Varus should have walked back mid, so I'm not sure what he's doing, but I think you're doing the right thing. Not too bad. Either shut down. Push this wave. You have vision in bot side. Probably should wait for their mid lane to show before you push this. At least that's what I would do. A little... Okay. Jinx showed. So you should be able to, again, safe to play this. I think as long as you don't face check Rek'Sai, you should be able to beat him. I'd probably W this bush and then go for those Krugs. Okay. So Rek'Sai shows. So now you can probably go back to the Krugs. Or even look to kill Rek'Sai. I think as long as you don't let him close the gap, like you should have no problem. This is good. You're getting pretty much as much farm as you can here. Come back. We see Rek'Sai push another bot wave. Okay, your side landing is actually quite good. I like that. It could be a little better, but for the most part, it's actually it's actually really good. You push this in. I think it's kind of greedy to hit this tower when your jungler's dead. So you base. Really nice. Really nice. Now, um, when you go the the collector build normally you go Serelda's third you don't even build essence reaver so i'm not sure why you're building essence reaver i don't really think you need it um yeah actually i just don't think you need it at all so i think it's a pretty big itemization problem Serelda's is a lot better helps you kite out champs like rek'sai um helps you chase down like more mobile champions so i don't know why you built that i think maybe it was just a misclick or something um but definitely don't do that if you did it on purpose so again just play on your range here really nice Really nice. Like, this is so good, right? Like, this, you're so good against their team comp if you get fed. Like, they don't really have the tools to, like, chase you down. You get some autos. You play it really nicely. And you do a shit ton of damage. Nice. Yeah, really nice. You have lived. Okay. I think you, you kind of used your E a little late here. So, like, let's see. Like, right now, really good, right? And I think here, you like... So you get your E back, you actually have E. You could probably E auto-auto this Rek'Sai, but you flash instead, and then you would have flash here. I mean, honestly, it probably doesn't have that much of a difference. I think also, let's see, can you actually live after this? I'm trying to see. 
Like, what do you die from? It's just, like, creeps, right? And just, like, red buff on you or whatever. I think maybe if you'd ran away from these creeps, you might have lived. Because you don't have any lifesteal except for bloodline, I think. And I'm not even sure you have bloodline. Couldn't check. Because it seems like you don't heal anything here, do you? Oh, no, you just have some lifesteal. Okay, well, anyway. It's not too bad. Uh, Lulu got the kill, so even if you had a shutdown, I'm not sure you did. It would have been fine, so I think you played it pretty well. Um, but definitely building the wrong item, so that's a kind of a big problem. But okay, it was pretty nice. So you come back here, take the grunt, which is good. Then you... Yeah, so this is all great. Then you come, shove this wave in. Your jungler's hovering to you, so that's really, really nice. I mean, you guys definitely win this, as soon as you have alt. I think you should have W'd this guy as well. Hey, you have a kind of bad habit of not using your W before your R. Like, it doesn't matter here, I guess, because, like, she doesn't have the movement speed to get out, but I think normally if you just, like, W R, it just makes it so much easier to actually stick on people. I, mean, I guess you're just too fed, and it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Oh, she's cutting the red away. Oh, and dies. <laughs> Um, yeah, you seem maybe a bit fucking dead. Oh, okay, actually, no, you're out. Now, why did this happen anyway? It's like, this happens, then Lilia walks in. Oh, I see it. So it's because Varus does raptors instead of ho hovering here. So it's kind of just like a team macro mistake. Um, but you play it well, to be honest. And you get a lot off this. Like, even if you die, your Kale would get so much top. So, okay, really nice. You get out, you base... Essence Reaver, and now you're building IE, I guess? The no Elders sort of troll. You, anyway, come by at a base. I think you should you should look at Rek'Sai's position right here and realize that they're not contesting drag. Like, I think um, when Rek'Sai shows just clearing the mid wave, that just means you can just, like, run bot. Instead, you're, like, giving up a wave to just run to this, but I think there's no universe that they're contesting this, so you've given up an entire bot wave, to five man drake it makes actually no sense i don't know why chaos here either it was really obvious that they were giving there and you guys could have maximized your farm a bit more you probably as a team lost about two or three waves there so pretty bad but obviously you can't do anything about your teammates so just uh just yourself now here it can be a bit scary to push this in can you ward yeah that that's a good thing to type it is really scary I think right here you kind of just have to wait like your Varus is in base uh your Karma is top side and your Lily is farming you have to be extremely careful right now because like you have no vision if you can just like play on your range like maybe you're fine but it is quite scary okay you see Lulu top so I think now you're actually maybe all right I don't think this guy can do anything to you he's dead yeah okay Lily is still top. I think now you go farm Scuttle Crab and Grom. That looks like what you're doing. Okay, no, you actually. Okay, right. So you see Rex I top, and then you come back bot. Good decision. Really good decision. I'm pretty impressed by your side lighting, honestly. So that happens top. Come here. Then you push. You could probably look to take this tower on the next wave. You could maybe. Just one shot this guy with WR, I think. If he tries to defend. Oh. Be really careful about wasting your W, because I think that, that was a kill that you could have gotten there. With WR and Gale Force. But because you use W. Oh now you're going. Yeah, it was just like super weirdly played. Again, it's like you the best time to look to kill this guy is when like all those creeps are there and like when with WR. Playing it like that, it's super I don't know, it's just like super weird. Yeah, and that's a mess. <laughs> yeah, you bring yourself. You give over a huge shutdown. I mean, I don't mind looking for the kill. I think it's... It's like... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's pretty good. I think you can probably get the kill if you play it, like, quite a bit better. Or, no, just even a little bit better. But you just play it like an alien, pretty much. You could have even queued him, I think. Like, let's see. He... Okay, so you, like, waste Q. Then you... Yeah, like, you could have queued the creep or something. So you kind of just, like, went on him when you had no cooldowns and when it was the worst possible time, like, where the wave was almost all dead. So, again, it's, like, sort of mechanical, but also... 
I don't know why you just like use your abilities like that, you know? Like you didn't go when you had W and Q up and you actually went when you had W and Q down. So that was super strange to me. Uh, and obviously it's a pretty punishing death because uh, the, the Jinx gets, what, 900 gold total? So she actually becomes sort of strong with that. Okay, to take all the farm. That guy is super dead. Nice. Okay, push. Come towards mid. Oh, what happened here? Okay, you decided you're going to walk in. Just fine. I don't think anyone can contest you anyway. Oh, and then this guy just shows up and gets one shot. Nice. So you farm him and farm the grub. I don't know who's worth more at this point. Yep, so just play on your range against this guy. You have no troubles. I think you should go to the top wave here. I'm not sure why you, like, start walking away. Like, right here, it looks like this top wave's super farmable. Yeah, so I'm not sure why you walked around. I feel like you leave the top wave in a really awkward spot. Okay, so you come back eventually. Um. Yeah, I mean, you have IE. Might as well base. I think... You maybe could have tried to get one more creep, because if you can buy stopwatch here, it's a pretty big deal. Like, if you have 40 more gold and can buy a stopwatch, it makes you pretty much invincible to, like, Talon Rek'Sai. I don't think you can ever die. So, having a lot of gold unspent like that is, is pretty big. You'd have to be, like, optimizing your bases a little better, just, like, realizing what kind of items you can buy. Okay. Murphing. Nice. Oh, that's just so annoying. I mean, yeah, it's pretty good. You managed to kill Jinx. You get a triple kill, so... Pretty happy with how you played it. I guess the only thing, again, that you could do differently is, like, you've wasted W again. Like, what did you use W on? So weird. You, like, never have... You never have W on. Okay, so you w the drag. Just, like, yeah. I think if you just have your W here, like, you probably can keep enough movement speed to k kill this Rek'Sai without having to do all this. Um... I mean, yeah, it works out. I think also here, when you're when you're fighting this Lulu after, if you just play on play on your range until after the polymorph is over, you should be able to kill her without dying. So it's like here, uh, you dash into her, you just like kite away for a bit while you're polymorphed, and then when your polymorph's gone, then you can look to like auto attack her again. So I think you probably could have killed this Lulu without dying, but again, it's like you played it pretty well, I think. Now, why does your team not get Baron? Oh, I see. Kale just wants to push bar. Okay, so... I mean... Yeah, Kale should have TP'd to it. But okay, whatever. So, now, out of base, you path bot. I don't think you should be... Path what the? This is so weird. So, Varus is pathing top, which means you should probably path mid. Because you don't really want to be bot when Baron's up without TP. It's like a little scary to, to be here at this stage of the game. Like, it's a bit okay earlier because they don't have realistic, like, potential to do Baron. But this is super, super weird lane assignments. Like, now you and Kale are in the same lane and no one's going to be catching top. So I think you kind of messed up your lane assignments a little there. I don't think you want to be down here anyway. So yeah, yeah, okay, this really, this really fucked you. Now Lilia has to catch that top wave. So this deployment out of base was really bad for you. I think you should realize that you want to be on the top side of the map because Dragon's up, you don't have TP. Uh, because Varus is farming top, you probably farm that one mid wave and then you look to go top. But because you like stayed around here too long, it ends up you lose that like giant three stack wave top. Uh, so you did lose quite a lot of CS for it. I think um, now this is also a bit scary. It's like your jungler is showing on the top wave, your mid is showing on the mid wave, and you're entering you're entering their vision, and the only person you can see is Lulu. So like. Or is there someone else in the mid wave? There might be someone else in the mid wave, but until you saw this Rek'Sai, right? Like, you could be walking into Rek'Sai Town in this bush, and you wouldn't know. So the reason that waves get pushed before you retake vision is because it forces the enemy to show on the wave. So, like, if your bot lane pushes, and then they show under your tower, and your bot lane can move, that's really easy. But you're kind of skipping steps here. You're trying to get the Baron wards before the waves are pushed, and that makes it, re like, really high chance that you die. Really high chance that you die. I mean, yeah, you actually did walk into Rek'Sai Talon, and you're kind of lucky that they... Okay, well, are you going to end up dying? Nice stopwatch. 
Okay, I mean, you kind of just outplay them, but it's also because you're super fed. But I'm actually kind of glad this happened to you, because you should realize that if this is a more even game, if these guys aren't just, like, miles behind you, like, you probably die here. And, and maybe lose Baron as well. So this would be a super, super bad death. And it would really fuck the game, honestly. But because you killed them both, because you're super fed, you played it pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean, you get Baron, and that should be, like, pretty much game, I think, right? Straight after Baron, I would probably... I'd probably run mid, actually. I think you've already... I think with Baron... Oh, well, Kale died. Okay, I guess if Kale died, you should probably run top. Generally, you want to play two two lanes with Baron. Well, actually, you have a few options. You could base, if your team wants to base. If your team wants to pressure, you should probably push top. If Kale was still alive, then I think you could go mid and pressure mid bot. But... Now, see what your teammates do. Because if they... Do, if they base... Okay, yeah. So, like, Lily is going to farm her jungle... I think you should just base and spend your gold, which you do. Good, you get GA, pretty nice. You come here and group with your team, I think this is good. You can't really trust people to not get engaged on. Now you, I think I just saw another W, I mean another ult without W. We have to break that habit. So let's see. Yeah, you just like ult without using your W again. Also, this is so weird. You like run into melee range of Rek'Sai for no reason. So like right here, okay, you are, you're trying to hit the Talon, okay, you miss, right now you should just cancel your R and auto attack and you'll just kill both of these guys. Instead, you literally run on top of Rek'Sai, which is so strange, and then you lose a bunch of HP for it. Guy flashes on you, but you have a GA, so that's, I don't know why he's doing that either. There's no way you die, you have Kale, and she's pretty strong. So yeah, it's like, you're fed enough that you just like, win this fight, but to be honest with you, you play this fight really, really badly. I think here, it's like, you look to WR, like some, you look to W, find out where they are, or to be honest, you maybe you don't even R, like if you don't know where they're gonna be, like if you don't know where this town is, maybe you just W, wait for them to show, auto attack them, and then look to use R at the end. Like, just imagine if you're just auto attacking, you probably kill these guys, and then you have WR for their carries, I actually think that is better. So you use your R in a way that you can't really guarantee value with it. Then you walk directly onto Rek'Sai, which makes your life super, super hard. So now you're just like no cooldowns and no HP. Fortunately, you have GA and you're also really fucking fed. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can't just like one shot that guy. Like almost dies. Um, you get some kills. You can push the bot wave in herbs. Don't think there's anything else really to it. Oh, that Gale's so strong. Alright, well that is GG, I'm pretty sure. There's no way they can stop you, right? Yeah, at least that was an attempt at using W before R. <laughs> at least there was an attempt. Okay, yeah. You're just farming them. Okay, so... Spring of the Notepad. Okay, things you do well. You do some... You do definitely do a lot of things well. I think your side landing is pretty good. Could be a little bit improved, but for the most part, your side laning was, was really, really nice. Like, honestly, pretty high level side laning. Uh, so that's not something you have to worry about. I think your laning phase definitely left quite a lot to be desired. So actually, I'll put early game. Like, you need to position, like, way more aggressively. Like, think about how the enemy is going to trade slash CS. So you should, like, really know that the way that he's going to get CS in the early game is by doubling it. You have to make him choose. So, like... If you're in a super winning matchup, like position, so that they have to choose to give up something for CS. So there's that. Um, what else was in the early game? I think, let's just have a wee look. I think that was, yeah, I mean, so that was really good. I think, yeah, I think you could have held this wave a bit more. So I'm going to say, I mean, the wave control was mostly good could, could be a bit better um like could, could could deny a bit more probably like there were times where i think you pushed it when maybe you shouldn't have there is like this time where you probably thinned it out where maybe you should have like kept it a little more but for the most part i think your wave control was quite good uh so not something you need to worry about hugely um i think q usage in lane needs to be improved a lot like there was a lot of times where you'd use your q poorly so like timing slash aiming it better um i think you should try focus on that a lot because that's where a lot of lucian's lane strength comes from especially against range champions 
uh, is is like that Q poke. It's very cheap and does a lot of damage. So, and it's also quite hard to avoid, to be honest, if if you do time it well. So yeah, that should be improved quite a lot. Yeah, like no Qs here. Pretty bad. And then I think, um, I mean, you're warding for the most part. Well, hmm. no, yeah, I think you're warding and hugging for the most part was. Was pretty good. Again, could be a little improved, but I'm probably not going to write it down because I think it was already quite good. Um, this was the thing with the mana, right? Yeah, you should be really careful about, like, um, like mana usage. Yeah, I think you yeah, need to be more careful with mana usage. So, like, the, the reason that you can use, like, spells and stuff on the wave, right, is basically to give you more tempo. So, like, if you queue the wave, obviously, it speeds up the rate at which you're going to get the wave in, right? So, it does, like, it does lead to a lot, and, like, obviously, that's going to deny him more. Uh, but you also need to be careful that if you do just use all your mana, suddenly, like, your threat kind of disappears. Because it's, like, like, right now, you still have threat, you have enough for E, W, and R. Um, but, like, now it's starting to get to the point where you don't really have enough mana to do a threatening combo. Um, and you can't really threaten him as much when he when he comes back to the lane as you should be able to. Um, this was a big thing. I'm actually just going to come down here and put, like, a skirmishing thing. I'm going to come... Well, no, I'll write it right now. So you're skirmishing, like, you need to think about, like, what the enemy threats are, such how to deal with them. So, like, sometimes it'll be you need to think about, like, threatening champions. Sometimes you need to think about, like, threatening abilities. Um, but basically, no matter what it is, you need to think about how to deal with them. So, like, Rek'Sai is a very easy champ for you. Because, like, unless he has Flash or Prowler's Claw, like, it's really easy to stay out of his range, right? Um, but, like, a lot of the time, when they don't have that... So, like, here, Rek'Sai doesn't even have Flash. And you're just... You're just choosing to melee range auto attacks with him. It makes literally no sense. Uh, so you lose, like, a ton of HP for free here. And you're kind of lucky that they're so far behind and it works out so well. And then there was also, um, this time, like, right here, where it's, like... You don't know if Rexai has Flash or not, so I can kind of understand, like, you know, you playing a little aggressive, but again, it's like you're going literally in, like, almost in melee range. I'm not even sure this guy needs to Flash on you. Like, let me actually just look. I think he might have just been able to walk up to you. Let's see. Karma's shield's on cooldown, because he just shielded herself, so that's the movement speed. You have E. Okay, yeah, I guess he did have to Flash, because otherwise you'd eat it, so. But yeah, you walk really close, give her a big shutdown. I think another thing... Just for, like, more generally about the game. Maybe I'll put... Well, yeah, this was the main thing for the mid-game. Um, no, actually. Well, that was the main thing with Skirmishing. To be honest, maybe it doesn't need its own category. I'm just going to put it there for now. Because it was still an early game thing. Mid-game, I think side laning was really good. I think another thing you need to do is, like, consider... Consider more your, like, teammates' positions. Because, like, there's a lot of times, for example... Like, in the early game as well, where you're playing, like, super aggressively when there's, like, no one around you and, like, you should get punished quite hard, you know? Um, I can't remember, like, off the top of my head. Oh, yeah, this roam. Roaming to weak side, not really a huge fan. Push in the wave. I mean, this was all really good. And, like, okay, it was, like, this time, right? So, you need to, like, consider more your teammates' positions and, like, how that affects you. So, like, here, I would say it's pretty greedy to be pushing this wave anyway because like your, your support's top your jungler is in base and you don't know where anyone on their team is except for jinx so i'm gonna say consider enemy positions as well um so it's like quite scary to push this uh though you're fed enough that if you'd played this better oh yeah we have to write down the wr thing lucian w before r please please god but yeah you could have won this um but it was like quite a bad time to be playing aggressive anyway Come mid at a base. There were a few other times like that. Like, maybe you'd have to go back and look at the VOD. Um, to remember which time specifically. Because I can't remember. But there, there were, like, some times where you were pushing really aggressively. And you probably could have died for it. And now this, honestly, was, like... Now we were just talking before about, like, thinking about what the enemy threats are to deal with them. You had a lot of fights where the fights went bad because of this, basically. Um, actually... I'll just put this in fights. Or maybe I should just move this to the mid-game, honestly. Yeah, I'll just move this to the mid-game. Put that here as well. But I think, like... 
yeah it's like this was a fight where you played on your range super super well and it causes you to just like pretty much 1v9 the fight like you're literally 1v4 right now and you managed to kill like three people that's pretty insane yeah like you basically completely 1v9 that fight and that's like what happens if you if you play the fights well if you play them how they're supposed to now this was all good you played that pretty well oh yeah this was a maybe a slight thing so whether or not i should actually write it down for you i feel like yeah you should like realize i guess like yeah i'll write it down so recognize early when the enemy team is conceding an objective so this will happen a lot definitely in higher level play is that like the enemy team will choose to give up something and look to trade for it so like right now gangplank's top without tp i believe um and the rex i was on the mid wave so most likely they're not contesting this this is like you you just farm bot here but also your kale should go top but yeah so like you miss the bot wave for free kale misses a lot as well although there's nothing you can really do about kale here's another time where i think playing aggressively is quite scary like you have your entire team in base you're basically pushed up on weak side um yeah so that's quite scary it's just like it's not really a problem for you because you're so fed this game but it's like i don't know if you just do this because you're super fed or if you just do this every game like i'd need to see more games right but if that is something you do every game then you need to be like really really careful about times like that um i'm gonna say also because i remember this now i'm gonna say like your like your skirmishing knowledge in general you should like try plan fights ahead a bit more like i think stuff like this um you know it's it's kind of up to you like if you if you just know intuitively how to play it like that's really good right but there's like there's no rush here like you can choose you can think in your head how you want to kill this jinx and i think if you're thinking about it there's no way that like the way you kill her is like okay i'm gonna use my w and my q and then i'm gonna all in her you know like there's no way you think that so it looks like something that you do very instinctually almost and it just like went really bad basically um then yeah that was all good that's all good oh yeah there was that one i can't remember where it was it was like that one deploy out of base that was super troll played that fight pretty well yeah so this deploy was was really really bad so um mostly your deploys are really good but so like generally after 20 minutes you need to be on the side closer to baron like you probably already realized that um but yeah it's like so you deployed bot out of base here and it caused you to end up losing a shit ton of farm you you would normally want to go top but because varus went top and found the krug it's like you should have farmed mid instead instead what happened here is like okay the bot the mid wave died no one farmed it and then you come and share XP, or rather you don't get anything, and Kale catches the bot wave. Then you come and take Lilia's Gromp, which is like, you kind of have to, because like you have nothing else to farm. But then because you farm Lilia's Gromp, Lilia comes up and like has to farm your top waves. So your deploy, like really fuck the game macro-wise. This only happened once, so I'm, I'm not sure if it's something you like need to focus on a lot. Again, it just kind of depends if it's something that happens to you a lot. Now this was a really big deal. So again, this is like considering your teammates' positions. So in the mid-game, the kind of like the steps to retaking vision is like pushing waves, enemy shows on waves, then you walk in. Because it's like, okay, if you push mid-wave, right? And, and no one shows there, they lose the wave for free, and then you can just wait, right? But if, like, what should happen is they realize, okay, the wave is valuable, so when the wave get push, pushed in, they catch the wave, and then you know that there's no one in this jungle just waiting to kill you. But what you're doing right now, no one's showing bot, your jungler is showing top under your tower, and your mid lane is still pushing the mid wave, and you're still trying to run in. It's very lucky for you here that one that they're so behind but two that the enemy team's not in the in the position to punish because i think you definitely should have died here and it would have been yeah it would have been a pretty a pretty bad death to be honest i think it if the game were more even it's it's maybe a baron for them so it could be really problematic um then like this was another super super weird fight i want to say it's like sort of the same thing before or maybe a bit more lucian specific yeah i think this is again like maybe planning the fights uh let's say yeah like planning team fights in advance like you use r 
realistically when it's like sort of hard to guarantee you hit anyone then you didn't cancel the r like this should have probably just been autos you walk into melee range with rexai so it's super super strange I, yeah i just don't really understand the decisions and maybe that's because you are just making them in the moment like you're not even thinking about how like you should think what oops why, how did i do that you should be thinking like what the ideal fight looks like and for me it's like that fight that happened earlier at that tier one tower where you're just like playing on their range and it's like super easy for you to just kill everyone so you kind of just win these because you're super fed and then the game ends so i think that's everything which is admittedly quite a lot so the general things for you to work on i'd say like your team team fighting slash skirmishing is a big thing to like trying to plan it in your head like before the fight you don't have to plan out literally every detail um but just like think about threats slash how you want the fight to go basically like you just want to have some sort of plan for team fights and skirmishes like you look at it you can quickly think like over three seconds like okay how am i going to play this rather than just like it seems to me that whenever you take a fight or a 1v1 or anything you literally just you don't have any idea how you want it to go you just play it and like yeah i don't know i think even very high level players Obviously, there are times where you have to react in the moment, right? But there's a lot of these fights where you don't have to react in the moment. Like, you have a lot of time to, like, think about it before it kind of happens like that. So, yeah, I think that's a big thing. I think also, just for the whole game, just, like, being more aware of the map state. So this means, like, enemy positions, like, team positions, um, like, vision, waves etc like right now i kind of get the feeling that you don't really consider anything that's that's happening on the map you don't consider if your map is weak or strong you don't consider like weak side versus strong side or maybe you do like i don't know to be honest but i think like you should be a lot more aware of the map state um and how it affects you there's a lot of times where i think you're playing a bit too aggressive kind of without it i think also yeah the, the, the laning laning like most of it i think like the lucian q thing like punishing early game a lot harder um like position yeah i mean that's like a lot of things like punishing the early game a lot harder which was like uh yeah your q usage and then like positioning more aggro like denying more cs um like i guess a bit better wave control honestly a bit better wave control but for the most part it was quite good so i think yeah your early game oh and there was also like like wasting mana um Stuff like that but yeah so i think those are the these are like the biggest things to work on but there is a lot here um and i've kind of just like generalized it into into these but yeah i mean these are pretty big right like your whole team fighting and skirmishing this takes time to uh, work on your laning i think the best way to kind of work on it is to either watch lucian vods like of the same matchup like i guarantee if you watched a lucian versus talon matchup you would not see the talon not take any damage until like three minutes or whenever it was um so yeah that's like a good way to to work on that being more aware of the map state this is actually quite hard to train i think because a lot of the time you won't realize what you're looking at i guess like now that you're aware of what things to actually think about might be a bit easier a good way i guess is like if you die in a game go to the replay and then just like pause like 15 or 30 seconds before your death and just look at the map and see what kind of clues there are that tell you that you're gonna die because like a lot of the time there is just like a lot of information on the map that you can gather for free uh, that tells you quite a lot. So anyway, I think that's pretty much it. I'll copy paste this to you. If you have any questions about any of it, let me know. This is actually quite long. It's maybe one of the longer VOD reviews that hasn't been live coaching. But I think there was a lot to go over. Um, to kind of reiterate, I think your good things, like you've got really, really good side laning. Like you potentially have master level uh, side laning, even though I think you said like what, like you peaked in diamond. So that's pretty good. That's like really impressive. But it's just like the rest of the game... Uh, you have to get a lot better at and um, i think if you do that you'll be a lot more consistent because you do keep like your your farm up a lot in the game which is really nice so you're always strong um, but then you like kind of don't use your strength as well as you can you kind of throw it a lot um, in team fights and skirmishes if the game were more even i could definitely see you losing uh, but yeah so you do a lot of good things there's some stuff for you to work on hopefully it's helpful if you have any questions let me know and finally um, I'll send you a message as well, but if you don't mind it being public, let me know because I'd like to post it. I think there's a lot of good stuff about side laning. Uh, but yeah, hopefully it was helpful and uh, good luck.